Caring for people with mental illness. What is mental illness? A mental illness is a disorder that affects a person's mind, causing a person to act in unusual ways, experience emotional difficulties, or both. In many societies and cultures, mental illness is viewed as something to be ashamed of. A mentally ill person's odd behavior may be frightening to those that don't understand it. Mental illness and the role of media. Movies, television, and books have contributed to the popular image of mentally ill people as crazy, violent, or out of control. Most people who are mentally ill may behave in violent or dangerous ways, but most do not. There are many different types of mental illness, and the mental illness varies from severity from person to person. Mental health. Simply put, mental health is the absence of mental illness. One of the main qualities of mental health is the state of emotional balance. Physical health is related to the body's ability to make adjustments to maintain the state of physical balance or homeostasis. Similarly, mental health is characterized by a person's ability to make adjustments to maintain a state of emotional balance. Life's events that cause mental stress include getting married, divorced, a new job, having a baby, and losing a loved one. For most of us, stress is constant in our lives. Physical stress. Stress which results from any change from the normal routine affects a person's ability to maintain the state of mind and balance. Changes that may affect us physically such as illness or disability cause physical stress. Effects of stress on our system. Stress that is not managed properly can affect a person's physical health as well as their mental health. For example, not being able to manage stress can put a person at risk for cardiovascular problems such as heart attack, digestive disorders such as ulcers. Each person has a limit to the amount of stress that he or she can effectively deal with at any given time. Fatigue, illness, and everyday stress sometimes can affect our ability to cope well with change. Many times, stress does not come from a single source. A person may be able to cope fairly well with one type of stress, such as a loss of a job. But when other stresses, such as a sick child, are added, the person may reach his breaking point. The person may cry, sleep excessively, or be unable to sleep have a difficulty concentrating, feel depressed for a time. Most people with good mental health are able to eventually overcome these feelings and regain their emotional balance. Signs of stress. The mentally ill cannot cope effectively with stress and may become unable to work, care for their children, make simple decisions, think clearly, or even provide their own self-care. A mentally ill person may need medication, counseling, support groups to help regain emotional balance. Signs of stress. Coping mechanisms. What do you do when you start feeling overwhelmed or stressed out? Over time, many people know what they can do to make themselves feel better when they start to feel overwhelmed by life's pressures. The conscientious and deliberate ways of dealing with stress are called coping mechanisms. Many people rely on positive coping mechanisms such as exercise, prayer, meditation, getting together with friends, or engaging in a hobby. Negative coping mechanisms where other people rely on negative coping mechanisms such as nail-biting, pacing, overeating, not eating enough, smoking, abusing drugs, or alcohol. Stress. Initially, these behaviors may help the person to reduce the stress, but over time, they place a person at risk for serious physical problems, mental health problems, or both. Positive coping mechanisms. Maintaining a state of emotional balance requires using coping mechanisms to deal with and adjust to stress. Defense mechanisms. Our bodies are programmed to try to return to a state of balance. When a person is under stress, the mind may try to return the person to a state of emotional balance by using defense mechanisms. A defense mechanism are methods of dealing with stress. They just happen. Usually the person is not even aware that he or she is using them. Defense mechanisms help us to protect ourselves from emotionally traumatic events. Defense mechanisms. Compensation. To make up for loss by filling in or substituting something else. For an example, a person who feels lonely may eat too much, substituting food for affection. Conversion is changing one thing into another. For example, a person that's depressed and has an emotional problem may develop a stomach ache, a physical problem. Denial. Refusing to believe something that is true, especially if the truth is unpleasant. 
For example, if a person has been diagnosed with cancer may truly believe that the doctor has made the wrong diagnosis and that he or she does not have cancer. Displacement, shifting an emotion from one person to another who is less threatening. For example, a resident who is angry with her daughter for moving her to a long care facility and who is afraid of expressing this anger because she fears that the daughter will abandon her. She may take the anger out on the nursing assistant instead. Defense mechanisms. Projection is blaming. Blaming someone else for your own uncomfortable or acceptable actions or feelings. For example, a resident may accuse a nursing assistant of breaking a vase when in fact the resident actually broke the vase herself. Rationalization. Making excuses or creating acceptable reasons for poor behaviors or actions. For example, a student who does not study for a test then fails it may tell herself that the reason why she failed is because the teacher was too hard. Defense mechanisms. Regression. To turn back to a former or earlier state. For example, an older child who was hospitalized may begin to suck his thumb. Repression is, is suppression. The refusal to remember or think about a frightening or painful memory. For example, a person who has been a victim of a terrible crime accident may not be able to remember the event. Repression and displacement. Repression when a person cannot remember what happened several months or years earlier. For example, an abuse that occurred as a child, either sexual or physical. Displacement is a defense mechanism. For example, when a woman blames a doctor for causing the death of her husband when actually the husband had a terminal illness. Question one, some stress is necessary to protect us from harm. True. Stress is the result of any change from the normal routine. For example, the stress of meeting a wild bear on a walking trail will encourage us to react in a way which we would protect ourselves. Causes and treatment of mental illness. Causes of mental illness. There are many different types of mental illness and many different causes. Some types of mental illnesses run in families. They're inherited. Others result from chemical imbalances and the chemicals called neurotransmitters. Some mental illnesses can be caused by a person's environment. For instance, a person who is abused by a family member may develop ineffective coping or defense mechanisms that lead to mental illness. Treatment for mental illness. The word psychiatric comes from the Greek words psych, the soul, and iatria, healing. A psychiatrist, a medical doctor trained in diagnosing and treating mental illness is allowed to prescribe medications. A psychologist, while not a medical doctor, PhD, has education and training that allows counseling services to help people with mental illness. The psychologist is not allowed to prescribe medications. For profound depression, one would seek out a professional to help which would be a psychiatrist. Depending on the person's situation, he or she may need the services of a psychiatrist, psychologist, or both. With treatment, many people with mental illnesses are able to lead happy, productive lives. Treatment for mental illness Dramat has dramatically changed over the past 50 years. In the past, mentally ill people were usually sent to special hospitals, mental institutions, where they were given large doses of medication to keep them quiet and sedate. In the past, techniques such as electroshock therapy, passing electricity through the brain to cause a seizure, and lobotomy, surgical removal of part of the brain, were used frequently, often with little success. Treatment for mental illness. Now that we know more about why mental illnesses occur and how they should be treated, Medications are used to restore the brain's chemical to balance, rather than simply sedating the person into submission. These new medications help the person act and think more normally. And electroshock therapy, while used in some cases, is used now much more effectively. Treatment is important because with treatment, many people with mental illness are able to lead happy lives and productive lives. Without treatment, they may suffer needlessly and may even be at risk for suicide. Types of mental illness. Types of mental illness. More common mental illnesses include anxiety disorders, mood disorders, schizophrenia, substance abuse disorders, and addiction, and eating disorders. Schizophrenia, one that has difficulty determining what is real and what is imaginary. Anxiety disorder. Feelings of anxiety can cause many physical signs and symptoms such as sleeplessness, restlessness, fatigue, Changes in appetite, increased heart rate and blood pressure, irritability, and difficulty thinking. 
Common anxiety disorders include panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, phobias, simple phobias, social phobias, and agoraphobia. A sudden panic disorder. Panic is sudden overpowering fright. A person with a panic disorder has terrifying episodes or panic attacks which she experiences extreme anxiety, feelings of intense fear. Anxiety disorders. Anxiety is a feeling of uneasiness, dread, apprehension, or worry. Anxiety is a normal feeling that we have in response to situations that are threatening to our body, lifestyle, values, or loved ones. A certain level of anxiety is normal and may actually lead us to do something positive about something bad or potentially dangerous situation. Too much anxiety or prolonged periods of anxiety can make it hard for us to function or cope with everyday situations. Anxiety disorder, panic disorder. A person who's having a panic attack usually also has physical signs and symptoms such as chest or abdominal pain, a rapid heartbeat, shortness of breath, dizziness. These panic disorders, for instance, signs of chest pain may be very similar to those of a heart attack or other severe physical illnesses. Anxiety disorder, panic disorder. Panic attacks can be very brief or they may last some time. Anxiety can cause a pounding heart or sleeplessness. Some people will experience these attacks rarely while others will have them quite often. It is important to remember that even though the physical symptoms may not be a sign of a serious physical condition, they are no less real and and no less frightening to the person who is experiencing them. Anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorders, which is OCD. Obsessive compulsive disorder is an anxiety disorder that causes a person to suffer intensely from a reoccurrent unwanted thought, an obsession. Obsessions are usually associated with rituals that a person cannot control, which are called compulsions. The rituals may include things such as hand washing, counting, checking, Obsessive compulsive disorders, the rituals are repeated over and over in hopes that the obsessive thoughts will go away. Obsessive compulsive disorder, not performing the rituals increases that person's level of anxiety. When it is severe, obsessive compulsive disorder takes over the person's entire life. The person becomes unable to perform the tasks that are associated with normal daily livings because of the obsessions and compulsions. Phobias. A phobia is an excessive abnormal fear of an object or situation. Phobias can be incredibly disabling for the person affected by them. The person will do anything to avoid the things she, he or she is afraid of to the point where they may not be able to do anything as simple as just leaving the house. There are three main groups of phobias. Simple phobia, social phobia, and agoraphobia, which is someone that cannot leave their home for any reason. Anxiety disorder phobias. Simple phobias are the very most common type. A person with a simple phobia is abnormally afraid of a specific thing. For instance, a dog or a cat, insects, heights, water, or flying an airplane. Social phobias involve a fear of being humiliated or embarrassed in front of other people. Social phobias may be related to feelings of inferiority, low self-esteem, Social phobias may cause a person to drop out of school, avoid making friends, remain unemployed. Agoraphobia is the fear of having a panic attack in a place from which there is no easy escape and where help is not available. For example, a person may be intensely afraid of having a panic attack in an elevator or on a crowded bus. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. After experiencing overwhelming traumatic events, Combat, natural disaster, serious injury, crime, assault, rape, death of another person. Symptoms include flashbacks, panic attacks, nightmares, depression, increased anxiety. Substance abuse and alcohol are common, if not. Mood disorders affect how a person feels emotionally. The common types are depression and bipolar. Bipolar Manic depression is a feeling of excessive happiness and excitement followed by a feeling of excessive sadness and hope. Mood disorders. Depression is a feeling of excessive sadness or hopelessness. Many events in life, such as the loss of a loved one, can cause a temporary feeling of intense sadness and hopelessness. And a person with good mental health, the painful emo of emotions of an event. Mood disorder. 
Some people, however, experience intense feelings of sadness and hopelessness that do not go away even with time. These feelings may or not be brought down by a sad event such as a death of a loved one. When depression is severe and persistent, it is called clinical depression. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain. Mood disorders. Clinical depression is one of the most common types of mental illnesses. It is, affects more than 19 million Americans each year. Some research indicates that a family history of clinical depression increases the person's risk of developing this mental illness. Women seem to experience clinical depression about twice as much as men do. Clinical depression is also the most frequently treated mental illness among the elderly people. Mood disorders. Several factors can lead to the development of clinical depression. Chemical imbalances of the brain, once again, is clinical depression. Low self-esteem and poor coping skills. Hormonal changes such as those that affect women during pregnancy, administration, childbirth, and menopause, and also medications can cause clinical depression. Signs and symptoms. A person who is depressed loses interest in activities that she usually finds pleasurable or fulfilling, such as eating, working, socializing with friends, and pursuing hobbies. The person may feel sad or anxious, and they may cry frequently. Many people who are depressed have problems with sleeping. The person may sleep too much or not sleep enough. The person may be restless or irritable. Instead of being grateful when someone tries to help, the person may become angry and defensive. A person might have feelings of guilt and worthlessness. Mood disorders. The person may struggle with thoughts of death or suicide. The person diagnosed with clinical depression is at risk for suicide due to a chemical imbalance in the brain. Physical complaints of, for example, pain or digestive disorder are also common among people who are depressed. Prompt treatment is needed to help clinical depressed persons return to an enjoyable, productive life. Depression and the older person. The incidence of depression increases with age. Elderly people are less likely to seek treatment for this disorder. Many older people who are depressed feel that their depression is just part of getting older, but this is not true. If you'll be working with older patients or residents, pay attention to changes in their behaviors, moods that may indicate they have clinical depression. By reporting these observations to the nurse, you play an important role in helping the person to Ensure that they receive treatment to help them feel better. Mood disorders, bipolar disorder. A bipolar disorder, manic depression, is a mental health disorder that causes mood swings. It's periods of excessive happiness and excitement that may cause a person to engage in impulsive or reckless behavior, mania, that are followed by periods of excessive sadness or hopelessness, depression. Experts believe that bipolar disorder is caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain that affects a person's mood schizophrenia. It can be disabling and it's a form of mental illness. It tends to run in families that may have a genetic basis. Schizophrenia may be mild or severe. A person with severe schizophrenia that has gone untreated may be in danger to himself or to others. A person with schizophrenia has trouble determining what is real and what is imaginary. He may suffer from delusions or false ideas. For example, the person may believe that he or she is someone famous or that someone's spying on him or her, or that someone's trying to steal their belongings. Schizophrenic person may experience hallucinations or episodes where he or she feels, sees, hears, smells, or tastes something that is not there. For example, hallucinations, a person may hear voices in his head telling him to perform a certain act, possibly to kill someone. Substance abuse disorders and addiction. Addiction is a physical need for a substance that results in withdrawal signs and symptoms when they quit taking that substance. Withdrawing is emotional and physical reaction that occurs when the use of the medication or drug is discontinued. Alcohol is most often abused by older people. Withdrawal signs and symptoms depend on the substance and how frequently and how much is consumed. Withdrawal signs and symptoms might include body tremors, mental status and mood changes, delirium, hallucinations, restlessness, nausea, vomiting, sweating, heart palpitations, and even eating disorders. The most commonly known eating disorders are 
anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, which is excessive vomiting or laxative use, binge eating. All eating disorders involve serious and potentially fatal changes in eating behavior, such as reducing the amount of food eaten to almost nothing or severe overeating. Eating disorders cause many physical problems, including kidney failure and serious heart problems that can lead to death. Eating disorders. Like people with other mental illnesses, people with eating disorders cannot voluntarily control these impulses and they need treatment to help them learn to eat normal again. Eating disorders usually start during adolescence or very early adulthood. Women are at higher risk than men for developing an eating disorder. Many people who suffer from de depression or anxiety disorders also suffer from eating disorders. Eating disorders, anorexia nervosa. People with anorexia nervosa see themselves as very overweight, even though they are excessively thin. Anorexia, loss of appetite, is a key factor in this disorder. The person simply does not eat enough food. She will skip meals, take tiny portions at times, or make excuses for why she cannot eat. She may only allow herself to eat small amounts of very safe, low-calorie foods. Many people with anorexia nervosa exercise excessive eating disorders, bulimia nervosa. A person with bulimia nervosa regularly eats huge amounts of food, binging, and then induces vomiting or uses laxative to get rid of the body of food before it is digested, purging. A person with bulimia nervosa often is a normal weight at his or her age and height. A person with bulimia nervosa is extremely focused on her body, the shape, the, the weight, and believes that he or she is excessively overweight. Binge eating. A person who binge eats will eat large amounts of food without purging. The need to continue eating is excessive. The person will become obese. A person who binge eats may develop various weight-related health disorders such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and hypertension. Question. The majority of mental illnesses are untreatable and these patients or residents are placed in special homes to protect themselves. True or false? False. Many mental illnesses, just like physical illnesses, can be successfully managed with medications, psychiatric counseling, or both. Caring for people with mental illness. Treatment facility for the mentally ill. Treatment facilities for people with mental health disorders differ in purpose. Some facilities provide a form of long-term care for the mentally ill people who cannot function on their own and need assistance with activities of daily living and safety. Other facilities specialize in acute care services and provide care to a person who's experienced a mental crisis that may result in attempted suicide, drug overdose, danger to others. After the crisis phase has passed, a person may be able to return home and receive treatment on an outpatient basis. Treatment facilities. Outpatient mental clinics see people on a regular basis and offer services such as counseling, medication, support groups. They may even help persons to obtain education, job. Even if you choose to work in a facility that does not specifically care for people with mental illness, you may care for people who develop mental illness. Think about the stresses a person in a healthcare facility experiences. He or she may have fears of being disabled or disfigured from an illness or injury. They're separated from loved ones and in an unfamiliar place. They're worried about the loss of job and income. They're worried about the current and future health. Any of these additional emotional stressors can push a person toward mental illness if he or she has poor or ineffective coping mechanisms. The elderly people are particularly at risk for mental illness. They face loss of spouse, friends, sometimes children, often within a short period of time. They face retirement, which can lead to a loss of structure, routine, and the sense of identity that their jobs once gave them. They face worries about money, especially if they're living on a fixed income. They face the loss of physical abilities, independence, either as a result of an illness or just the normal aging process. They may feel that they are a burden to their families. They may fear the need to move to a long-term care facility because of the associated loss of independence. Listening and observation skills are very important when you care for a person with mental illness. 
Be aware of the comments or actions that may indicate that the person is thinking about suicide and report the observations immediately to the nurse. When you notice a change in a patient's or resident's behavior or mental status and report this change to the nurse, you are taking the first step toward making sure the person gets the help he needs. The healthcare team will work to determine the cause of the person's change in behavior, which can lead to prompt medical treatment. Concerns for long-term care. Concerns for long-term care. In an older person, a physical problem can cause behaviors that may be similar to that seen in a person with mental illness. Never just assume that your elderly person or resident is entering into a second childhood or becoming senile. The person may have a serious mental or physical problem that needs to be treated. Concerns for long-term care. Example of physical problems can cause an elderly to appear mentally ill might include nervous system disorders, kidney disorders, chronic illnesses such as hypertension and diabetes, hypothyroidism, anemia, dementia, infections, dehydration, and side effects of medications. If you work in a facility that specializes in caring for the mentally ill, special methods of recording and reporting may be used. Know what to expect and how to report according to your facility policy. When reporting and recording subjective information about patients, the residents with mental illnesses, be careful to use the person's own words and avoid adding your own opinions or judgments. Concerns for long-term care. Certain phrases or words may be, have a special meaning for a particular person. To accurately gauge a person's mental status, the health care team will need to know exactly what the person's Various signs and symptoms which should be reported to the nurse, a change in appetite, change in sleep pattern, restlessness, pacing, unusual handling of items, inability to concentrate, crying for long periods of time or frequently, loss of interest in, in daily activities, loss of interest in social life. Tell a nurse. Signs and symptoms to report to the nurse. Inability to focus during a conversation or unwillingness to make conversation unusual mood or behavior changes, fatigue or irritability, expressions of feelings of hopelessness or helplessness, expressions of the desire to die, assisting with activities of daily living, assisting with ADLs. Mental illness can affect a person's ability to eat, sleep, rest, or manage routine with grooming and hygiene. People with mental illnesses will need different levels of assistance with their ADLs depending on the severity of their disorders. Promote independence. Always help to promote the person's independence by allowing the person to provide as much of his own self-care as possible. Some mental illnesses affect the person's ability to think through the steps of their routine care. You may need to gently remind the person of what steps come next. Question. Usually, if an individual has not developed a mental illness by the time they are elderly, they will not develop one at all, true or false. False. The unique losses and challenges that face the elderly may trigger a mental illness. For example, clinical depression is very common among elderly people. 